Hello, everyone. We're so happy you could join us today to celebrate and recognize the historic charitable giving San Diego experience in fiscal year 2020. Our annual meeting is generally a time when we come together in person to connect, celebrate, and honor the generosity of our fund holders and the notable accomplishments of our partners. But as we all know, this year is unlike any other. So this event, a report to our community, will also be unlike any other. In our hour together, I can promise you a few things. You will hear from our top leaders, our board chair, Kay Coleman, and our CEO, Mark Stewart. You will learn about how your gifts transform the lives of thousands of San Diegans. You will meet local philanthropists and other nonprofit leaders with inspiring stories. And in the second half of our program, if you are a fund holder, you will have the opportunity to give a $5,000 grant to your favorite nonprofit organization. Now, I'd like to introduce the chair of our Board of Governors, Kay Coleman, who has a special message to share with us. Take it away, Kay. Thank you, Brian. Hello, everyone. I'm Kay Coleman, chair of the San Diego Foundation Board of Governors. On behalf of the Board of Governors, we want to thank you for joining us today as we honor and celebrate your enduring philanthropy and commitment to our San Diego community. This past year has challenged us to come together like never before. Thanks to your generosity, the San Diego Foundation granted more than $77 million to nonprofits that strengthen our region. This has been the most charitable year in our history. Collectively, we also surpassed $1 billion in assets, a true testament to the unmatched kindness of San Diego donors. As we celebrate these milestones, we also recognize the ongoing challenges we face as a community. For all the positivity that philanthropy brings to the region, the events of 2020 have brought hardship and loss to our doorstep. As we share this fiscal year's report to the community with you, COVID-19 continues to harm San Diegans. The devastating effects of climate change mount region-wide, and the generation's long fight for racial equity persists. These are challenges we must meet head on, and we will, together. We began fiscal year 2020 with ambitious goals to adopt a new strategic plan that would guide us into the future. While we had to put those efforts on pause, we made it a priority to update our mission and values to reflect a renewed commitment to the community and a path forward with purpose. To date, our COVID-19 Community Response Fund has contributed more than $52 million to nonprofits working on the front line of the pandemic. Our longstanding programs continue to help young San Diegans and families most in need. And our recently launched Black Community Investment Fund is focused on strengthening racial equity in the region for current and future generations of Black San Diegans. Over the coming months, we will continue to meet the evolving needs of San Diegans, while also finalizing our strategic plan to help us lay the foundation for a brighter future. At every step of the way, we promise that the San Diego Foundation will lead with its values and listen with humility and respect. Our future will be built upon inspiring enduring philanthropy and enabling community solutions. The past year has reminded us of one important thing. Even though we may face an uncertain future, there's one constant that remains. San Diegans and San Diego are better when we work together. Thank you. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Kay. I couldn't agree more that we are better when we work together. And sometimes, like this year, we work so hard that we may lose sight of what we're actually working for. So let's take a moment and watch a short video to remind us of why we love San Diego, the place we call home.
there is a rhythm to our community. A cadence. We are connected to this tempo. These patterns. Every day, we can choose to bring opportunity and positive change to this positive place. Because this pulse, this heartbeat, it binds us and reminds us that we are all connected. We want to see everyone flourish in this place we love by providing equitable opportunities throughout our vibrant region. We can create resilient communities where our family, friends, and neighbors can thrive. Every time I see that video, it reminds me that our connection as a community, the way we help each other, the way we pull together in times of great need, is what makes San Diego so special. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our president and CEO, Mark Stewart, to highlight our collective achievements in fiscal year 2020, and to honor and celebrate the generosity and commitment of our fund holders and partners. Over to you, Mark. Thanks, Brian. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Stewart, President and CEO of the San Diego Foundation. 2020 marked the San Diego Foundation's 45th year of serving the San Diego community by inspiring enduring philanthropy and enabling community solutions. But that is not what I will remember about 2020. I will remember this as a year in which we chose hope over fear and love over hate. As our board chair, Kay Coleman, shared earlier, this year, your generosity led to historic, record-breaking grant-making, more than $77 million. You funded so much for so many. $23 million for health and human services, $15 million for education, $10 million for civil society, $9 million for arts and culture, $9 million for youth development, and $7 million for the environment. And you invested in the place you call home, in your neighbors, in your coworkers, and in your community. More than 87% of all grants this year benefited San Diego nonprofits. This includes support of the San Diego Foundation's ongoing work in environmental justice and climate equity, with an investment of more than $700,000 to strengthen regional resilience. Also, we embraced our work in educational attainment, awarding $3.3 million to more than 1,000 students to achieve their educational dreams, including more equitable opportunities for first-generation and low-income students. And we ended the year focused on crisis philanthropy with the launch of the COVID-19 Community Response Fund, granting more than $52 million to ensure local organizations could be there for our fellow San Diegans. San Diego nonprofits needed your generosity more than any other year in recent memory due to the global pandemic that has brought San Diego to its knees, impacting our health, our economy, our education, and the future of our children. Your acts of kindness and love have lifted up those in need. As a community, we came together to keep hope alive for those who didn't have a roof over their heads, food to sustain them, or a computer by which to learn. Despite these and many other challenges, you gave a hand up to San Diegans disproportionately impacted by the coronavirus to fortify their will not to give up and to seek help from one of the hundreds of nonprofit organizations you supported to provide food, childcare, financial assistance, 
shelter, educational support, and so much more to San Diegans in every corner of our region. On behalf of every member of the San Diego Foundation staff, thank you. So many of you answered the call for help. In Carlsbad, Sage Creek High School student Nolan Mejia founded Grocery Grab, a free shopping and delivery service for seniors who couldn't leave their home in his community. Nolan recognized a need, mobilized his fellow students to act, and donated almost $3,000 in student tips to the San Diego Foundation's COVID-19 Community Response Fund. To date, Nolan and his fellow students have delivered more than 5,000 items worth $14,000 to seniors all over North County. Nolan shared that a lot of the seniors felt lonely in isolation and having someone to talk to, even through a mask, social distancing can make a difference. Nolan is one of our youngest donors. His entrepreneurial spirit gives us so much hope. The San Diego Foundation manages and invests almost 2,300 donor advised funds for San Diego individuals, families, businesses, and agencies. More than half are endowment funds, many starting as planned gifts or legacy funds. And collectively, these charitable funds reflect more than $1 billion in assets. We have had so many donor heroes this past year, but please allow me to highlight one special individual. Before she passed away, donor Diane Johnson couldn't have known that a global pandemic would create the need for her legacy fund at the San Diego Foundation. Since then, the Diane Johnson Charitable Fund has impacted countless lives, including dozens of students who found themselves in need when that pandemic left them without the resources that college campuses offer when classes moved online. Diane's fund helped pay for student expenses so they didn't have to drop out of school or fall behind their peers. Diane's visionary planned gift gives us hope. In March, when we launched the COVID-19 Community Response Fund, we were joined by inspiring leaders who are all donors and many also fund holders at the San Diego Foundation. The Hervey family, County of San Diego Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, San Diego Gas and Electric, Qualcomm and Illumina, and more than 3,000 other donors and advisory council members of the fund. Your leadership and transformational gifts give us hope. If you're a fund holder of the San Diego Foundation who has made a grant this year, you have helped thousands of individuals invite hope to stay and to maintain their spirit to never give up. At the San Diego Foundation, our work will not be complete until everyone who calls San Diego home has the opportunity to prosper, the opportunity to thrive, and most of all, the opportunity to feel like they belong right here. More about that next, when our Vice President of Impact and Partnerships, Pamela Gray Payton and her team highlight the impact of our programmatic work this year. For now, back to you, Brian. Thanks, Mark. You know, one of our long-term donors, Dee Dee Albert, said in the middle of the pandemic, the needs of our community were so overwhelming and immediate that joining together with the entire San Diego community to give to the COVID-19 Community Response Fund was the best way for her and her husband, Michael, to help. Dee Dee is one of hundreds of San Diegans who have a donor-advised fund here at the San Diego Foundation. Historically, community foundations and donor-advised fund holders have stepped up to support their communities during difficult economic times. This year, with more than $77 million granted overall, that giving is unprecedented in its size and scope. To date, more than $1 billion has been contributed from donor-advised funds across the nation, including more than $10 million here at the San Diego Foundation to battle the impacts of the pandemic. This year, some of our donors went so far as to grant the entire value of their donor-advised fund to local relief efforts. Our CEO, Mark Stewart, shared early in the crisis that what we give and how we assist with basic human needs is a reflection of our community's values and San Diegans met the moment. Now, 
I'd like to introduce the Board of Governors member and chair of the Board Impact and Policy Committee, Pradeep Gidwani, with an exciting opportunity for our Foundation fund holders. Pradeep? Thanks, Brian. Hello, San Diego Foundation family. I'm Pradeep Gidwani, a board member here at the San Diego Foundation. And as a special thank you to our fund holders, we decided to use the funds we would normally earmark for our annual meeting event and to give five lucky donors the opportunity to make a $5,000 grant to the nonprofit of their choice. If you're a fund holder and you RSVP'd by November 11th, your name is here in the drum and later in the program, we could draw your name. So stay tuned and we'll see you later in the program. Thanks Pradeep, that's so exciting. We have about 30 minutes to go until we unveil those names. And in our next program segment, we have some very inspiring stories of impact to share with those joining today. As donors and partners, one of the most common requests you have for us is to learn more about how your gifts and your efforts make an impact. Here, to share more about how we are enabling community solutions throughout the San Diego region is our Chief Impact and Partnerships Officer, Pamela Gray Payton. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you, Brian. When the coronavirus pandemic first struck San Diego and the San Diego Foundation partnered with local leaders and organizations to establish the COVID-19 Community Response Fund, the philanthropic response was immediate. We are so grateful to each and every donor and funder who gave to help those in need. Thanks to our commitment to trust-based philanthropy, our strong relationships with community-based organizations and government, and our ability to grant significant resources out to nonprofits quickly and nimbly, the San Diego Foundation and the donor advised funds we manage and invest have become critical assets throughout the crisis. In this part of the program, we'll take an in-depth look into some of the most critical needs we responded to, financial assistance, food security, and the digital divide in education. You will hear about why these needs rose to the top what we achieved together, and finally, we'll visit with one of our nonprofit partners to hear firsthand about their work and their impact. Here to kick off our report to our community about how we are enabling community solutions and the inspiring impact of our nonprofit partners is Katie Rast. Thanks, Pamela. Today I'm gonna to talk about some of our recent work in the childcare space. Childcare was already inaccessible for many families before the COVID-19 pandemic. This last January, with our partners at the San Diego Workforce Partnership, we shared a report that indicated that nearly 190,000 children in San Diego County under the age of 12 had no stay-at-home parent and no available childcare spot. The picture before the pandemic acknowledged a challenge. Supply was limited, childcare providers were operating on thin margins, and care options were scarce and often unaffordable for many San Diego families. The COVID-19 pandemic brought a new layer of challenges to this critical industry, as well as to parents across our region. The pandemic impacted childcare providers in different ways. At the peak of COVID-19 related closures, almost half of childcare centers closed often smaller, operating out of homes, and often serving lower income communities, 97% of home-based ch family child care centers remained open. Providers of all kinds were affected by changes and the need to adjust operations to provide care under new guidelines. Families already facing hardship also experienced compounded challenges. Recent research published by SANDAG confirms that the pandemic has had disproportionate effect on lower income workers in the San Diego region. Individuals and families who are already working hard to make ends meet have been hit the hardest. And the numbers show that low wage workers were not only more likely to become unemployed, but to stay unemployed after the pandemic, as these jobs are seeing the slowest recovery compared to middle and higher income jobs. For many parents who could not work from home, including first responders and essential personnel, access to care for their children was needed now more than ever. It was necessary that the San Diego Foundation, along with our partners and donors, step up. In response to this crisis, with your support, the San Diego Foundation has worked to support children, families, and child care providers throughout our region. Through donor advised giving and funding through our Early Childhood Initiative, the foundation has contributed over $5.1 million to children, families, and child care this year. That number includes nearly 3 million that has been given through the Community Response Fund, which would not have been possible without our generous community of philanthropists. 
These contributions were well leveraged. In addition to this, with the support of our local government partners, the San Diego Foundation has worked to ensure another 35 million in government related funding is available for local child care providers and families. In partnership with the City of San Diego and the County of San Diego, over 10 million in child care vouchers were awarded to offset the costs associated with child care for essential personnel and parents who needed immediate care. In partnership with the County of San Diego, YMCA and Child Development Associates, $25 million in CARES Act funding was directed to support over 3,300 child care providers in the San Diego region in an effort to shore up an industry in a moment of critical need. I want to give a heartfelt thanks to our donors and community partners. None of this would have been possible without the thoughtful and generous action from our donor community. Your support has allowed the San Diego Foundation to immediately respond to the needs of children and families in our region. Through our work with the Community Response Fund, we've had the opportunity to interact with many amazing nonprofits. They're the ones making this happen in the community and we have such tremendous respect for them. When it comes to supporting children and families, Say San Diego has been serving the region for over four decades. I'd like to introduce Nancy Gannon Hornberger, the CEO of Say San Diego to say a few more words about her organization. Early childhood opportunities are an enormous investment in the community that has a great return over many years. The children who have that early literacy and numeracy, that early social development that infant care and preschool offer do far better in school they tend to really be set up for high achievement as they go through their education and into the workforce. And their parents are not drained away as talent from the workforce. So for the economy, it's a double win. When Say San Diego set out to be a leader in this space and to expand affordable options in early childhood services, we thought, well, let's start with ourselves. This is our dream come true. This is our first workplace child care center for infants and preschoolers. And we see it as a triple win. So infants and preschoolers from six weeks to age four have early learning and social development. Their parents, who are our employees and members of the community, have an affordable, convenient, and high quality option for childcare, which helps them with their career development and of course with their family development. And then the third part of it is to demonstrate that this is possible. The San Diego Foundation came in and said, your ideas are, are good ones and this is, you know, there's some risk involved and we'll help you with that. Uh, so the grant helped us with the build of the center itself and the outdoor learning environment. Um, and that was very important because we felt that we could handle the operating fees and that we had staff expertise, which we could fund, but we really needed that capital money uh, to get it rolling. The COVID-19 crisis has placed an extra burden on every family. And for our client community, that burden is extremely heavy and possibly heavy. Filling this need or the enormous and critical gap in early childhood services is an all hands on deck proposition. So we're making our specific contribution as a nonprofit, but we're very pleased to see the governor, the city, the county, San Diego Foundation, other philanthropists, other nonprofits stepping into the breach and saying we really have to do better by our kids. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lydia Van Oat, the Environmental Initiatives Director at the San Diego Foundation. Since 2017, we have known that one in five San Diegans suffer from food insecurity. Food insecurity means a person or a family has to skip meals, can only afford inexpensive, highly processed and unhealthy foods, has minimal access to fresh, whole foods, and the family struggles to avoid hunger within a year. Oftentimes, these parents have to choose between feeding their families and paying rent. This is how roughly half of the children in our school system qualify for food assistance. When shelter in place went into effect, 
Not only did families that were living paycheck to paycheck not have enough income to pay their bills, the children who qualified for food assistance weren't able to access food at their school. Over 400,000 calls have been made to 211 San Diego since March, with 65% of those calls being about food security issues. The San Diego Foundation and our COVID Response Fund immediately acted to support safety within the food distribution, with a total of $3.6 million from our generous donors going to support various strategies to address the food security issue in our region. One of our first strategies was to support hunger-free kids effort led by local leaders from the public sector, San Diego Unified School District, community health improvement partners, and other social service providers working to support new safe food distributions from our schools. This effort created a safe school meal distribution that not only allowed children to access healthy meals, but also ensured volunteers and staff had personal protective equipment to keep them safe. This included hand washing stations to masks to signage that instructed families how to receive the food that was contactless. Our generous donors to the COVID Response Fund made this quick response possible. Ocean Discovery Institute, located in City Heights, is another great example of the quick response made by the San Diego Foundation and partners serving the community. Ocean Discovery Institute is a longtime partner of the environmental initiatives at the San Diego Foundation. They focus on educating and engaging youth on science and conservation. However, once local youth had trouble accessing healthy food, Ocean Discovery Institute was able to quickly pivot to a food distribution site. Ocean Discovery Institute uses science to empower young people from City Heights to become our next generation of science and conservation leaders. When the pandemic hit, it was clear that we had to shut down operations, but we also knew we had to continue to serve our community, especially because they would be feeling the effects of the pandemic so acutely. I'm proud of how swiftly we've been able to transition from doing what we normally do, providing science experiences, mentoring, and the tools for success to still doing that, but it looking very different. As an instructor, I am so excited to be able to hand out these STEM to go science education packets to the students of our community. Each week we had out about 250 of these packets. We were also able to hand out a few basic school supplies. So by handing out these supplies, we are um, giving them all the tools they need to succeed. I've been helping my mom with my younger sisters navigate the new world of online education. But what happens to those younger students that don't have older siblings, that don't have parents that speak English? This is just one of the many barriers that our families are facing during this crisis. Hello, my name is Michelle Jaramillo. I'm the Director of Education Initiatives for the San Diego Foundation. In early March, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the closure of our schools and a difficult transition to distance learning for our region's 500,000 students from kindergarten to grade 12 and over 200,000 students enrolled in post-secondary studies. As we settled into distance learning, the digital divide and its impact, especially on students who are furthest from opportunity, came painfully into focus. An early assessment from the San Diego County Office of Education revealed that there were over 100,000 students in the K through 12 system who were unconnected or underconnected. Imagine filling every seat in the old Qualcomm Stadium and still needing an additional 30,000 seats to meet the needs of students who simply did not have a personal computing device or internet connectivity at home or face some other barrier to being able to connect and keep up in their home setting. And that is just our elementary and high school students. But the digital divide also impacts our region's college and community college students. 
In fact, a survey conducted at the onset of the crisis across our community college districts identified nearly 17,000 students in immediate need of a laptop in order to transition to distance learning. The impacts of the digital divide under these circumstances are severe, will be long-term, and will deepen inequities in educational outcomes. The lack of devices or quality internet means students are not signing on to their classes or facing difficulty keeping up if they do. All of this is contributing to learning loss, which is predicted to be as much as seven months average across all student groups, or as much as 10 months for black and brown students specifically. In response, our region's nonprofit heroes and education partners move quickly to equip students with the critical tools needed to adapt to this unprecedented shift to education. And thanks to the incredible generosity of all who contributed to the COVID-19 Community Response Fund, the San Diego Foundation was able to provide nearly $6 million to support their efforts in bridging the divide. For example, nonprofits like Computers to Kids, when in the earliest days of the crisis, most other organizations were closing or clamping down operations, Computers to Kids worked furiously to ramp up their work to source, refurbish, and get computers to kids in need. Our region's schools, colleges, and community colleges, like Southwestern College, which serves students from some of the communities hardest hit by the crisis, mobilized to get laptops and other essential computing devices in the hands of aspiring graduates. Our education and community-based partners have been amazing in their response. But the need is great, and the latest estimates point to 48,000 students who remain unconnected or underconnected. The San Diego Foundation, with the support of our generous donors, continues to mobilize resources to support efforts to bridge the divide once and for all. Southwestern College has prided itself in taking a holistic approach when it comes to supporting our students. Besides the academics, we offer emotional support and guidance in navigating the system. Not being able to see and help them in person, we created a virtual welcome center to help answer questions and provide a comprehensive overview of departments that can answer more specific questions. There's no doubt the pandemic will affect how Southwestern College does business and educates our students in the future. The college has strong community ties and collaborations that have helped us immensely to tackle the obstacles that we're facing. But we still need your help. Together, we'll continue to support our students. They're so resilient, they just need a little help to get them through these difficult times. Funding from the San Diego Foundation has been a huge help. It has allowed Southwestern College Foundation to grant more than $150,000 in CARES emergency grants and also purchase more than 1,300 computers and 70 Wi-Fi hotspots. Your support is an endorsement that can be leveraged in our requests to other foundations and donors and helped our foundation coordinate our most successful online campaign for student needs to date. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle, Lydia, and Katie for sharing that very important report on our efforts and the efforts of our nonprofit partners to assist San Diegans disproportionately impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Early next year, the foundation will be kicking off an exciting webinar series highlighting more about challenges facing our community and the nonprofit leaders changing the trajectory of lives of those negatively impacted and how you can help. We are almost at the end of the program today, but I would be remiss if I did not mention our recent efforts related to improving racial equity in the San Diego region. Recently, the San Diego Foundation joined forces with the Central San Diego Black Chamber of Commerce to launch the Black Community Investment Fund, transforming today to rewrite the future. The goal of the Black Community Investment Fund is to support through philanthropy, the creation of new community-led opportunities that will improve the education, employment, entrepreneurship, home ownership opportunities for Black San Diegans. Our goal is to create generational wealth. The BCIF will complement the work of government and other task forces across the region. We are excited to have joining us in this effort, a wonderful advisory council 
made up of San Diegans with deep roots in the community. Everyone joining the council brings leadership, expertise, and commitment to the work of the Black Community Investment Fund. And now I'd like to share with you remarks Donna DeBerry provided at our recent launch event. Donna is the Central San Diego Black Chamber of Commerce CEO and Executive Director. Co-founded by the Central San Diego Black Chamber of Commerce and the San Diego Foundation, the Black Community Investment Fund will serve as a community resource to fund nonprofit proposals. This fund will prioritize and invest resources in community-led innovative efforts that increase racial equity and generational wealth for Black San Diegans. We know that past and present economic and social conditions are at the root of all types of achievement gaps. And although representing only 6.4% of San Diego's regional population, Black community members are underrepresented in many areas, including educational attainment, home ownership, and entrepreneurship. It is time for Black San Diegans to live in their possibilities and not just in their identity. The precepts of social and economic justice dictates that disadvantaged and underrepresented communities deserve to be included in the American dream. To date, the Black Community Investment Fund has raised more than $1.3 million. Grant making will focus on four key pillars impacting economic prosperity among Black San Diegans, and that they are education, employment, housing, and entrepreneurism. This fund will complement the tireless work of other efforts focused on economic equity in San Diego. The Black Community Investment Fund will be led by a coalition of innovative minds and community stakeholders that are going to provide guidance, leadership, and diverse subject matter expertise to the fund. Now, the moment fund holders have been waiting for. Pradeep, what about those five lucky donors who will be able to give $5,000 to their favorite nonprofit? Thanks, Pamela. I'm glad you asked. We've now reached the time in the program where we have the opportunity to pick five of our fund holders who get the opportunity to take a $5,000 grant to give to the nonprofit of their choice. During this time of unprecedented need in our community, it's such an amazing opportunity for our fund holders to have an extra $5,000 to give to a nonprofit of their choice. With so many nonprofits doing such an amazing job helping our community, we are so excited at the foundation to be able to take the money that we're going to use for an annual event and get those funds out to the community and also allowing our fund holders to be the ones who decide where those funds go with so many exciting opportunities to help in our community. So with that, it's time to figure out who our five winners are. And the first winner of a $5,000 grant to the nonprofit of their choice is Jay Hill. Congratulations, Jay. Our second winner is Janice Mueller. Janice, congratulations. Our third winner, Jim Ziegler. And our fourth winner, Kim Dorian. And our final winner of a $5,000 grant to the nonprofit of their choice is Lisa Stern. Congratulations to all of our winners. We look forward to finding out which nonprofits you give money to, and we thank you so much. Back to you, Pamela. And now it's my pleasure to thank you for joining us today. We hope that you've enjoyed the last hour and that you have seen the impact your generosity has provided across our region. Together, we can make San Diego better. Now, I'd like to invite you to look forward to a link you'll receive tomorrow for our annual report. In the annual report, you'll learn so much more about all the great work happening at the San Diego Foundation over the past year. I also encourage you to look forward to learning more through our webinar series, which will launch in January. Once again, thank you all so much for joining us. I encourage you to stay healthy, stay safe, and remember, together, we can do more.